everyone. I'm glad that you have joined in with us right here for this special broadcast. I believe the Holy Spirit has something special for you, and I'm glad to see the people right here in the room with us. Let's all give Jesus a great big hallelujah. Wow, wow, so awesome, so awesome to see you here with us this evening, and, and uh, been warm today, a nice day here in Dallas and wherever you're watching from in the world. I pray it's been a good day for you, and we pray for the people that are suffering and going through a hard time over in Belgium. What a tragic, tragic yeah. catastrophe. Uh, such evil in our world today. That's why we need you and me doing more of what we're doing this moment. We need to overcome all the evil we possibly can with good. God is a good God. Satan is a bad devil. And he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Now, I'm glad to see all of you that are watching uh, on live stream, you that are watching on live cast. We pray we have no problems this evening and we go through the whole broadcast without any technical difficulties. And I do see that everyone that has joined on with me here, if I don't call your name, I want to just get right into the message here in just a moment. But I do want to say... Um, I do want to say that um, we are so excited, uh, and I want to give a, a, a welcome again and shout out to all the people. Where we have people watching in South Africa, Nigeria, New Zealand, uh, Australia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Vietnam, India, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Rom Romania, Moldova, Austria. Uh, Russia, United Kingdom, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Slovakia, Canada, Mexico, and of course, these United States of America. Amen. 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 Uh, we are so glad that you're here this evening, and uh, I want to share some things with you that I believe will be faith-building and will lift you up in the Lord. And Kelvin, it's Kevin, it's good to see you from over in Knoxville. Judy, it's good to see you and all the people that's making themselves known. I'm glad that you're here with us. Um, I want to talk to you about some things that's very important. But before I do, let me remind you that we're going to be here in Dallas praying for 40 days from Easter Sunday until uh, the National Day of Prayer. The National Day of Prayer is in May, of course, and there's 40 days in between Easter and the National Day of Prayer. And I have taken it upon myself to commit and ask people to commit with me along with the people that lead the National Day of Prayer. I've been involved in this for quite a number of years, and years ago we went to Washington, and, and there we were a great part of the National Day of Prayer in the big Constitutional Hall, and it was broadcast live by satellite. So we'll be praying here, right here in this room on that special day. We'll be having two special broadcasts that particular week. But I, and if you'd like to pray with us, you can just type in here uh, and give me your name, either, either on live stream or live cast, whichever one you, you want to. You can type your name in there and say, I want to be in this 40 days of prayer. Now, you don't have to pray an hour a day. You don't have to pray 30 minutes a day. But if you'll commit to pray for the America and a move of God and a great awakening throughout the world for these next 40 days, if you'll do that, just type in here and let me know so that I can know that you're joining us along in prayer, praying for the United States and the world for a great awakening. We need an awakening in our world today. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Well, once again, Susanna, I'm glad to see you here. And as I said, many people join with us and do not participate in the chat. And that's okay, just so you're there. And I see Solly from up in, uh, Solly Royer from up in Toronto. We're glad that you're on with us this evening too, along with many, many others. Now, this evening... I want to talk about something that's very, very important because we all face adversity in our life. 
I don't believe there's anybody in this room or anybody that's listening to me in any part of the world that is not facing or has not faced different types of adversity. Now, I believe this. I believe we can learn lessons when adversity comes. Now, let me, let me tell you this. God does not bring adversity to us. I want to be clear. Satan, I just quoted the scripture, Satan is the thief. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, again, people are joining us, and I just see here Slava from over in Moldova. Moldova, it must be 3 o'clock in the morning there in Moldova. Can you believe they got up to watch our broad... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my brother, for being a part. He and his lovely wife, Olga, was such a part of our meeting the last time we were in Moldova. And anyway, all of these people that join in, and, and you that watch this later, we just pray there's a divine connection in the Spirit. That if you're facing adversity, your family members are facing adversity, and there's things against you, that you will learn a lesson during this time of adversity and turn it into a blessing. Now, let me ask you this. What challenges, what challenges have you uh, had and have you learned a lesson from that challenge so that you don't fall into the same snare again? See, many people, they do the same thing over and over and over again and expect different results. But you have to learn a lesson when hard times and adversities come. What's this here for? What's happening? What's going on? And take the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit help you go through it. See, how often are you able to remember and act on the lessons to receive blessings in your future? Remember, did something happen in the past? Did something happen to you and, and you learned from it or did you not learn from it? Did you go back and do the same thing over and over again? You know, uh, in marriage, there's things that we can learn lessons from. You know, there's, learn, there's times to talk and times not to talk. <laughs> And in relationships, you know, in relationships, there's time to talk and there's, there's time not to talk. And so I've just learned a long time ago that um, if I wanted to stay married, that there's times that I needed to keep my opinion to myself. Sometimes my opinion was mine and I didn't need to share it. Uh, and so um, I just appreciate the fact that I have learned lessons. Frida, thank you uh, for wanting to be a part of the 40 days. Solly, thank you for wanting to be a part of the 40 days. Deborah, thank you for wanting to be a... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that are doing that. Barbara, thank you for uh, joining in with us, and we're going to be praying uh, for your, your dad. Uh, he had a stroke Friday morning. We're going to be praying for him. Uh, Judy, you want to be a part of our 40 days of prayer. And look, come on, let's give these people a big hallelujah that's saying um, that they want to be a far, part of our 40 days of prayer. I mean, I'm going to storm the gates of heaven. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to storm. I've learned some lessons that the devil is a liar and that he is the father of. I'm, I'm going to preach tonight. I'll tell you, I feel the preach here tonight. I've learned that the devil is the thief. When adversity comes, I've learned where it comes from. I know it does not come from God. So when adversity comes, I have learned a lesson to take the word of God and stand on the rock, stand on the word of God, and not allow the enemy to steal from me anymore. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, again, all of you that want to be a part of this uh, 40 days of prayer, I'm telling you, we're going to storm the gates of heaven and we're going to believe that God is going to do something not only in the United States of America, but we're going to believe God that he's going to do something worldwide. And you know what? Since God gave us this broadcast and people are watching us in all these different countries and new countries are being added on every week and every day, people are just joining on in different countries. I'm believing God that this 
this ministry that we have, I believe it's going to cause an explosion in people's lives. I believe healings are going to come. I believe awakening is going to come. Salvation is going to come. I believe you're going to learn lessons from failures, from mistakes, and say, I'm going to stand in prayer. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm not going to allow the enemy to take my family to hell. Listen, folks, we have got families, all of us. We've got families that's out there that's listening to the lies of the devil. The devil's pulling on them, showing them the wrong thing. But let me tell you something. The devil has been defeated 2,000 years ago at Calvary. And it's time we learn the lesson that the Word of God is alive and alive forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Susanna. Susanna is going to be praying along with us these 40 days. Now, it doesn't matter what time of the day you pray. And some people may want to fast a meal, two meals, three meals. When looking at all of us here in the room, I don't know about you, but looking at all of us here in the room, we could all afford to miss one or two and it won't hurt us at all. So we can fast, we can pray, we can seek God. And I'm not just saying words to you. I believe the Bible. The Bible said in the last days he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So I believe with all of my heart, there's the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that's beginning. There is a manifestation of the presence of God, the glory of God. You know, we read over in the Old Testament where the priest could not stand to minister because the presence and the power of God was so strong. We believe in that right now. You know, my wife was just telling me about a friend of mine uh, that was having a Holy Ghost meeting. And and uh, uh, they said as, as the longer the meeting went, the more the people left. Well, you know what? I believe it's going to be the opposite. The longer the meetings go, the more the people come in. Because there's healing, because there's blessings, because there's love, because there's visitation of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. And when adversity comes, I've just realized that nothing... Nothing is too big for God. That God is bigger than any adversity that comes our way. Can you say amen? amen? Oh my goodness, Donna, I'm glad to see you on. Donna, my niece way over in Fort Payne, Alabama. Donna, and you're going to be praying with us. I hadn't seen you on here in a long time. Uh, Melinda, uh, you're going to be joining us too in this 40 days of prayer. And Bob Beavers, thank you so much. I'm telling you, people, come on, begin to tell me. And you'll pray with me. I, I, want, I, I know i got to get to my message, but I'm telling you, we're going to be praying for 40 days. 40 days. We're going to be pressing in. Like that little woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. What if she had given up? What if she had said, it's just too hard? What if she had said, I just can't do it? But I'm telling you, I don't care. You know, and now that's not a good term. Whatever is going on, I do care. But whatever is going on around you, God is bigger than the situation. And we're going to pray till we see the manifestation and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit take place. God is a God that is alive and alive forevermore. Evermore. Well, there's my sister from over in Chattanooga, Tennessee, or over in Trenton, Georgia. She said, I'll be a part of the 40 days. Amen. Amen. Hi, Mike, from over in... Uh, um, uh, you're in Rossville, Georgia. Hi, Mike. You're seeing me on my high side, Mike. You've probably never seen me this 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 high, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm high on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, people talk about weed and uh, marijuana. I guess it's all the same thing, but they talk about me, weed, marijuana, uh, heroin, and all of this. Uh, what, what's that other stuff? Math and what? Um, cocaine and I, I don't know what all that is I've never done that stuff but I don't I've never needed it because I get high well you can see I get high just reading the word of God I get high spending time with people like you these these awesome people here that's with me uh, on, on this broadcast and you that missed uh, you that missed the first part let me just say it again people are watching us from South Africa Nigeria New Zealand Australia Malaysia, the Philippines, Vietnam, India, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Romania, Moldova, Austria, Russia, United Kingdom, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Finland uh, Slovakia, Canada, Mexico, 
and the United States of America. Something is happening around the world right now. Right now, something good is happening. You know, and, and Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, it said, I have set before you life and death. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Now choose life. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So why not choose the good things? You say, well, there's a, you're talking about adversity. There's a lot of bad things. Yes, exactly right. There's a lot of bad things that comes to us day in and day out. But when they come, when they come, you have the Word of God to answer every situation with. You have God's Word. See, life is choices every day. And the choices we make, they can bring, they can bring blessings or they can bring a lot of pain. And God's Word tells us to choose life. This means that when adversity comes, what should you do? Don't start saying things like, uh, I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why that God allows this. But start saying good words. Start thinking good thoughts. Don't agree and say, it, it seems like nothing good ever happens to me. See, that's not learning. That's not learning. When, when bad things happen, when something happens that, that, that goes wrong, uh, don't, don't just start thinking about every negative thing that has ever happened in your life and start rehearsing all the negative things, but start thinking about the good things. Start thinking about the good things, and when these, these things begin to go through your mind, just give praise to the Lord. You say, you asking me to give praise to the Lord when things are tough and difficult, and it seems like God is so far away from me, and He's not giving me answering, answers, and I don't have direction? That's the time to be stable. That's the time to learn. That's the time to learn. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you to the end of the world. Think about that. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I'll go with you to the end of the world. See, what, what, what I learned and what I'm asking you is hold your head up. Hold your head up and expect the best. You know, uh, we all have uh, things in our bodies that we have to overcome, don't we? And sometimes it's serious things that happen. Serious things that happens in our bodies. We've all gone through times that it's been serious. But, but when something happens, a symptom comes. When that symptom comes, don't start thinking the worst when that symptom's there. Start thinking the best. Start thinking about, well, this could be something that's not serious. And start taking the Word of God and begin to call those things, Romans 4, 17, call those things which be not as though they were. Just start saying, I believe I'm in health. I'm going to be okay. Now, if you've got something serious wrong with you and you go to the doctor and he tells you, try your best not to panic. Try your best not to panic and get into fear when something goes wrong. Uh, one of the things you need to understand is when, when something is seriously wrong, panicking only gives that more freedom. God has not given us, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. So if something is seriously wrong, begin to take that scripture and say, perfect, and take the one over in John, 1 John 4, 18, perfect love cast out fear, and begin to think about how much God loves you, how much God cares about you. See, I know we do have serious problems. You know, I mentioned it might have been last week or the week before, but I was mentioning about my friend David Horton, who lives in Tampa, Florida. He and his wife, Cherie, they've been in the ministry for years, and they, actually, David used to work for me when he was a young man, and, and they traveled with Kenneth Hagin for many years, and his dad taught at Rama Bible College in Tulsa for many years. Well, Cherie 
got bone cancer. Bone cancer. Three doctors gave her up to die. Three doctors. Well, I remember David telling me about this and asking me to pray. He didn't tell me just to be telling me, but he asked me to pray is why he told me. Well, I went to prayer with them. I believe God, along with many, many of their other friends and their family members, and began to pray. Well, the more they prayed, the worse she got. The more she, we prayed, the worse she got. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, it just means what I said. We prayed. <laughs> But she has what's getting worse than then three doctors gave her up to die. And they wanted to turn her over to hospice. But you know what? Because the doctor said that, they didn't give in. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. They kept believing God. They had learned a lesson. That just because the doctors say something, God's word says something different. Jesus said, Jesus said, uh, um, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Peter said, by his stripes you were healed. So they started saying what the Bible says instead of repeating to what the doctor said. See, many people repeat what the doctor tells you in the negative realm rather than start repeating the word of God over and over again. Well, David called me a couple of weeks ago or whenever it was. I don't remember. Uh, it was on a Tuesday right before one of our broadcasts. And he called me and he said, we got a report from those three doctors that give Cherie up to die. They gave us a, a, a report now that she is cancer free. There is no sign of cancer. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Brother Jerome, and 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 uh, uh, just a little bit, Deborah. I will be praying for Chris. Um, we're just going to believe that the devil is not going to steal that relationship from you. Um, he, uh, uh, Deborah, you, you you've tuned in here. God's put you here with this, and we're in this room. People all over. I'm telling you, there's a powerful connection of prayer throughout the world tonight. <clears throat> Throughout the world, there's a powerful, see, see the people that's watching us over in New Zealand, Australia, and those places, it's already Wednesday morning there. They're already into Wednesday, so it's when, uh, in, in India, it's early morning in India. So in Moldova, where Slava is watching us from, uh, it's three o'clock in the morning there on Wednesday morning. So all of us here, we got a powerful pra prayer chain. Author, author, are you from Mexico? Author, is that you down from Mexico? Let me know if that's from you. I I think that's for you from down in Mexico that's on with us. I, I want to tell you, uh, we're going to enter into faith and we're going to believe God that that no matter what happens around you, it's not going to get in you. Now, as I told you that about Sheree, she, she had bone cancer. There is not a trace. There's not a sign. She is cancer free. She is cancer free. And then, then a, a few, few months ago, I got a, uh, I got a text from one of my friends. His name's Bob and he lives down in uh, Florida as well. And he sent me a, a text and he said, Pastor, and I've known him for years. He used to attend our church here right here in uh, Dallas, Texas. And, and he sent me a, a text and he said, I've been diagnosed with cancer and they're telling me there's no hope. They're telling me I'm going to die. But he said, I refuse to accept that. I refuse to believe that report. He said, I know cancer's in my body. He said, I know the cancer cells are there, but I refuse to accept that cancer is going to take me out and kill me. He said, I am believing that I'm cancer free. And, I, and he was would send me texts and he would just um uh, 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 he, he would send me texts and, and he would say, uh, Pastor Don, I refuse to, to give in to cancer. I refuse what the doctors are saying to me and telling me that's going to happen to me and that I'm going to die. He said, I'll live and declare the works of the Lord. I'll live and declare the works of the Lord. He learned a lesson. He learned a lesson and the lesson that he learned was that the word of God did not change when bad things happen. See, 
It's easy to worship God. It's easy to shout. It's easy to pray when everything's going all right. I mean, when everything's going all right, if the family's happy, you got money in your pocket, you're paying your bills, uh, people at work's happy, you're happy, and the family's happy. Why, anybody can praise God during that time. But when it gets tough, the money quits, the job quits, or there's no money for the house payment, or the car breaks, or something goes wrong, or somebody cusses you out, somebody does you wrong, somebody steals from you, you know, can you stand up then and say, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Arthur, you're telling me there's an hour difference. It's summertime now. Well, yeah, I'd rather you be a little late than never. Are, are you from Mexico? Are you from Mexico? And, and Mary from Nashville just joined in with us. Bless you, Mary. We're glad that you're on with us. I'm telling you, I am so excited because I know, I know something good is happening. I just know there's divine connections around the world right now. I, your faith, my faith, the, it's all passing together and the demon spirits that's in the air. They're having to dodge our faith. I mean the spirit of God is going forth and I can just see the demons of hell just having to dodge because good things are on these airways tonight. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Well see this is, if you're experiencing adversity, you know just, just, just like someone right here just told me a minute ago uh, yes, from Mexico. You're from Mexico, Arthur. Just like somebody uh, told me um, on, on one of the, the messages here that someone in their family is not speaking to them. Someone in their family is not speaking to them right now. Well, see, this is nothing but the enemy. This is a time of adversity. It's a time that Satan just wants to get in there, kill, steal, rob, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come. That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Wow. That you might have it more abundantly. See, whatever's going on, don't let the devil cause you to start having that pity party. And start feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, look at me. What I'm going through. Nobody cares. Well, you know what? You may be in a situation that nobody does care. I don't know, but God does. I do, or I wouldn't be here this evening. I don't do this for me. <laughs> you know, I don't do this for me. I do this to speak words of encouragement, to speak words of life, and let people know that you don't have to walk in the valley all the time. That you may be in the valley, but you've got Jesus holding your hand when you're in the valley. Amen. Amen. Everybody in this room, let's just give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. You know, you may be in a situation and it looks like more is against you than is for you. You know, I don't know that I've ever really been in that situation, but I know there's been times that I felt like I was in that situation that more there were against me than for me. But you know, instead of looking at that, I had learned a lesson from God's Word. And it's in Isaiah 59, 19. Isaiah 59, 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and put him to flight. Now we either, you know, you, you have to decide if you believe that scripture or not. So just because the scripture says it doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, I got, uh, Daryl, do you, Pastor Daryl, do you know how many scriptures is in the Bible? Come here, come here. Come on over here. This is Pastor Daryl. Um, how many scriptures is in the Bible? 31,101. 31,000. Now what? 101. 31,101 One. scriptures in the Bible. Yes. Now, I didn't, I didn't know that there's that many. I knew there was a lot, but I didn't know there was that many. Um, 
30, say it again. 31,101. That's how many scriptures there is in the Bible. Now, it doesn't do them any good to be there if you don't believe them and you don't practice them. Is that right? That's right, Pastor. That's right. Now, how many, how many chapters? You know how many chapters? 1,189. 1,189 chapters. <laughs> 1,189 chapters. Well, I never have taken the time to, uh, to uh, count all the, the chapters. Well, you probably know. 789,328 words in the Bible. <laughs> Go sit down. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Wow. 7,000. 789,000. 789,328. 328 words in the Bible. Wow. That's a lot of words, isn't it? There's over 8,800 promises in the Bible. And 85% of those promises, Pastor, are promises from God to man. 85 85% of the promises. There's over 8,000, 8,800 of them actually. 8,800 promises in the Bible. And 85% of those promises are promises from God to man. 85% of those promises are from God to you. Wow. Amen. To Amen. you. That's right. To me. That's and I right. want to get in on this yes. too. Yes. Wow. Now let's do it again. How many words? 789,328 words. How many scriptures? 31,101. Wow. How many chapters? 1,189. And I know there's 66 books. <laughs> <laughs> One author. One author. <laughs> One author. I believe it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, oh, Numbers, gosh. Deuteronomy. <laughs> Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, because you're going to get me mixed up, <laughs> Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First uh, and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, um, John, First, First, Second Peter, First, Second, Third John, uh, Jude, and Revelation. Yeah. Well, I do know that. Wow. wow. I do know that. And I really missed out on one of Philemon. I call that filet mignon. Bless you, Pastor Darrell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now, now, to me, this is what makes this program so good because sometimes I just am just feeling at the moment to do something. And to hear how many scriptures, how many words, how many chapters... Uh, of how many promises there is in the Bible. This makes it more real to me whenever, whenever I hear someone that has broken this down like this. And as I just went through and quoted all of the 66 books in the Bible, and I had my brother Al that was helping me out, and I was hearing him, but I was concerned he was, and I put my hand up, don't say it, because I was a, concerned he was going to get my train of thought, and I was going to say something or miss one. And I didn't want to miss one, because I love every one of them. And yeah. as Pastor Darrell said, there's only one, there's only one author. God is the author of the Old and the New Testament. Can you say amen? Yeah. Now, whatever adversity or battle we face or go through, um, whatever battle we go through, God's word and those promises are there for us to lean on. As I said, now all of the words, all the chapters that we just, uh, um, Pastor Darrell, how many words again? 789, 328. 789, well anyway, I'll just stop right there. 789,000, we know there's that many words, but what good is it 
if you don't believe all of those 789,000. See, the Word of God has said everything. And He said 85% of all the promises were directly from God to you. But what good are those promises if you're not going to believe them? If you're not going to act on them? When adversity comes, go to the Word of God. See, the Bible, the Bible to me has become real. It's not something I just look into and find something good to say or try to encourage people only. But I live by it every day. You know, you hear me say it over and over again. I get up in the morning and get my soul happy. You know, there's sometimes my soul just wants to just, uh, just wants to go around and, and, and wants to look at the gloomy side and feel the gloomy side. But I decide that my soul is not going to dictate my life, that my soul is going to get itself happy because I'm going to take the Word of God and get it happy. Amen? Amen. And see, I've learned that God will help you Fight your battles. God will help you fight your battles. You know, I think about the scripture in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. This is where um, uh, a whole army, a whole army had come to take the prophet of God, Elisha. Elisha had been told by the Lord... To tell the king of Israel what to do and what not to do. And the king of Israel did that. Well, the king of Syria said, we've got somebody among us that's telling our secrets. Well, nobody among them was telling the secrets. God was just protecting his people. See, if we'll listen to God, God talks to us. I've learned to listen for God to talk to me. Some people say, God never talks to me. I say, he's talking all the time. Maybe you just can't hear. Well, the king of Syria, he sent a whole army to get one man. Now think of yourself right now. You may be seeing like, well, God doesn't care. God doesn't see what I'm going through. God doesn't look at God. No, 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 don't get into that. See, you're watching the broadcast, you're here, so, so don't get into all of the feeling sorry for yourself and beating yourself up because you've been beat up enough. Why do, you know, that's the thing, when adversity comes, we've all been beat up enough. Why beat ourselves up along with it and saying God doesn't care, nobody cares, I don't understand. We've been beat up enough, let's change things. Amen? Let's change things. Amen. Um, and Slava, thank you for, for putting this on, on uh, live stream. We don't have that on live cast. That would be sure, sure would be good to have it on live cast because we have the largest audience on live cast. But uh, he's, he's written down, Daryl, just what you said. And he's put in here, every, everyone, that uh, about the 36 six books of the Bible, uh, 31,101 scriptures, 11,089 chapters, 780,328 words, 80. 800 promises, out of which 85% promises. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you for listening. Oh, thank you for listening. See, that's what this broadcast is all about. This is to communicate the Word of God. This is to, for you to rise up and for you and me to join together in the Spirit. Jesus said my words, John six sixty three. He said my words, they are Spirit and they are life. I believe tonight my words are Spirit. I believe they're life. I believe the Holy Spirit is cutting through some barriers and some yokes and giving you victory. Well, when I'm talking about Elisha, when I'm talking about Elisha, I mean here... The king sends a whole army after one man. You're that important. Tracy, you're that important. Tracy, you're that important. You say, no, I'm just Tracy. (laughs) No, you're not just Tracy. You're God's child, Tracy. God cares for you. He loves you. And he'd send a whole army just for you. I believe just as much as God did it for Elisha, he'll do it for you. Well, you know, it's amazing. The servant, Elisha's servant, saw all of these men coming with their horses and their chariots. Fear came on him. And he went running into Elisha and he said, hey, there's a whole army out there. There's more 
there's more of them than they are of us. What are we going to do? Elisha said, fear not. Fear not. For there's more with us than there is with them. And he blinked his eyes. The servant blinked his eyes. And he looked and he saw the mountains full of horses and chariots and flames of fire everywhere. God opened the servant's eyes to see the situation wasn't near as bad as he thought it was. See, many times, that's what I'm saying. Learn the lesson. The situations, most of the time, are not near as bad as we think they are. But when we get into fear, when we get into fear, that's when things look wrong. That's when they look worse. I've often said fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. Fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. So what we need to do is take the Word of God, stand on the Word of God, and believe and believe that Jesus is Lord in every situation. Now, as I said, God will help you fight your battles. And sometimes adversity comes after a great victory. Have you ever noticed that? You've had a great victory, you've had a great blessing, and, and adversity comes. But in 1 Kings chapter 18, let me, let me just tell you about how that, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah... Now, this is 1 Kings. We just talked about Elisha, the, the, the prophet that had received the double portion of Elijah's spirit. But now we're going back to 1 Kings chapter 18. And Elijah had come through this drought because he had prayed and closed the windows of heaven. But then the Lord told him it was time for it to rain. So they went on top of Mount Carmel, and when they were on Mount Carmel, my, what a victory they had there. You know, the, the, the prophets of Baal, they were, they were crying for God to send fire and to consume the sacrifice, and they were worshiping the false god, but nothing happened. You know, there's people in our world right now worshiping false gods. I'm telling you, folks, there's people all over. And you know what? There's people that don't go to church. There's people that don't serve God. But you know what? I'm, st I'm sitting here today very encouraged in spite of the, all the bad things that's happening. I'm encouraged to believe that we're closer to the time of the great visitation. I believe we're closer than we've ever been to the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. So in your life, whatever you're facing, whatever you're experiencing, realize you're just as important to God as we see these things in the Bible. When they happen in the Bible, it's for us to go back to, to read, to meditate on and say, God, you did it then, you will do it now. Elijah was on top of Mount Carmel. Actually, I've been there several times. I've been to that spot several times on Mount Carmel. I've seen that place where Elijah was. And he prayed and the fire came and consumed the water and the sacrifice. And then he sent his servant out to look for the cloud. He prayed, but he, nothing happened. He prayed, and nothing happened. He prayed, and nothing happened. Then he could see. He prayed, and nothing could happen. He prayed, and nothing happened. He prayed, and nothing happened that he could see. But he prayed again. And this time the servant come running back. He said, I see a cloud rising up like a man's hand. Mm. God just stuck his hand out there and waved a little bit. <laughs> God said, hello, hello servant, tell Elijah that I'm here, that I've heard his prayer. Tell him it's going to rain. <laughs> it's going to have a Holy Ghost rain for somebody. Somebody's going to have Holy Ghost rain in their life. Amen. Somebody is going to have Holy Ghost rain. That's right, Deborah. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises. See, that's the lesson I've learned. I didn't know there was 85% of all the promises. I didn't know of that, but I've learned something here tonight while I'm preaching to you. Amen. Now, Elijah, Elijah had such victory. You know, he killed those prophets of Baal. Then he told, then he told Ahab, he said, get up, 
get to the city just as quick as you can because I hear the sound. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear it. Well, that's what I hear in the Spirit. I, I, now, I'm not just saying words tonight. But I hear in the Spirit right now that there's rain, Holy Ghost rain for someone. There's Holy Ghost rain for someone. And, then, and when I say rain, rain, they were in drought. They were in drought for over three years. It had not rained. They needed rain. Somebody right now, you need the rain of the Holy Ghost. You need the touch of God in your life. But there is a divine connection in the... Oh. I know it, I know it, I know it. There is rain in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Slava, for moving over to Lightcast and putting that on Lightcast so everybody on Lightcast can see this. Amen? Slava's over there in Moldova, and he just moved that over on the Lightcast and put that there. Thank you for that. <laughs> Whew, I don't know about you, but I'm just having myself a Holy Ghost time. And I appreciate the people that that's put little things in there. Um, somebody's on here called Fireball. I don't know who that is, but glory to God. Are they, I don't know if they're calling me Fireball or they're Fireball. Uh, one, fireball 1123. One, one, anyway, uh, I'm glad you're on Fireball, who you are. And I'm glad your own. I'm telling you, I'm just in Jerome. I'm glad you're on. I'm glad you're better. Let me tell you something. God is the same God for you that he was Elijah. Amen. Now, think about this. Elijah had had this great victory. And after he'd had this great victory, then the Holy Ghost came on him. The power of God came on Elijah Elijah had told Ahab, said, get up and get to the city as quick as you can because it's going to rain. It's going to rain hard. Well, think about this. The Spirit of God came on Elijah and he began to run and he outran, he outran Ahab's horses <laughs> to the city of Jezreel. You say, well, that's just a Bible story. Well, so what? It happened. God's no respecter of persons. And God used Elijah to bring great deliverance. He stopped the rain. Elijah brought the rain back. By the word of his mouth, he brought the rain back. Now, great victory had come. But after this great victory, this is what I want you to understand and learn. Sometimes after you have a great victory, that's when the enemy comes in. And tries to pull everything out from all under you. He tries to come and pull everything out from under you. And, and then things dry up for you. And this is what happened to Elijah. Jezebel heard what Elijah did to the prophets. Of how he slaughtered the prophets. Got rid of the false prophets. She became very angry. And she sent word to Elijah. And she, he said, she said, I'm going to take your life. I'm going to kill you. Here, a man had just had such great success. See, this shows we're all human. I don't care how many great men of God in the Bible, how many great women of God in the Bible. This shows, this shows that all of the things that happen to the people, they're still human. They're still emotional beings. They still have attacks from the enemy. This great prophet that seemed to fear nothing or no one, all at once let fear get into him, got depressed. Lord, just let me die. Just let me die. See, don't, don't let the enemy do that to you. Don't say, I just can't make it another day. I just can't make it enough. See, there's no need saying that. You only enhance the, the emotion. You in, only enhance the depression. You only enhance all of the problems when they come. So when, when it comes, when a great victory comes, remember and start watching and guarding your heart. Now, I'm not saying to expect something bad to happen, but that's where the devil comes in so many times and he just tries to jerk everything. At, jerk, I almost say jerk the rug out. And some of you in other countries may not understand that. But it means just pull everything right out where you'll fall flat on your face. 
But I want to tell you, you don't have to fall fat on your, flat on your face, face like Elijah did. But see, God loved Elijah. So Elijah was running. But he stopped to take a rest. Fell asleep. But look how God loved him. God tapped him on the shoulder, on the face or somewhere, and said, Wake up, son. And here these angels served him some food. God is serving somebody some food right now. Somebody right now, you're in that place. Come on, come on, you here in the room, put your faith with mine, agree with me. Just start praying in the Spirit right now. Just start praying uh, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Arthur, bless you. You know, when th this brother here from Mexico, uh, he sat next to me. He's a pastor, and, and I was doing a conference down there, and he sat next to me, and, and he made me make him a promise. And he said, uh, I'm going to learn more English, uh, so the next time you come, will you promise you'll learn more Spanish by the time you come? Well, Arthur, I hadn't kept my word. Uh, um, uh, I'm going to learn more Spanish so when I come back that you and I can talk. But you're saying you're learning more English, so that's good. Uh, anyway, um, a little side note there. Uh, that's another thing that I like about this program. I can just be spontaneous. Amen. But I, I, I see Elijah. See, I can come back to my point. I see Elijah when that angel said, wake up, wake up. Here's some food. God is telling me to tell you right now. He's serving somebody something right now. He's, he's, he's giving you some encouragement right now. There's something coming to your spirit right now. Coming out of you, flowing into your emotions. And just be encouraged. Well, he went back to sleep. That angel came again and said, Elijah, Elijah, here's something else for you. God served him the second time. He still hadn't learned the lesson. He still hadn't learned the lesson. But he got up and began to run for 40 days on the strength of that meal. And he went into a cave. And when he went into that cave, God said, what you doing here? And he sent a, God sent an a earthquake and storms and noises and fire. But it wasn't God speaking to Elijah. It was a still, small voice. A still, small voice started speaking to Elijah. See, there's times that all of us need to slow down. There's times that all of us need to slow down and just hear the voice of God. Elijah learned that it's not in the loud things. See, I appreciate the modern day church. Don't misunderstand me. I appreciate the lights, the smoke, the music. It's so good. But you know, you can go to the largest church in the world, but that doesn't mean you'll be touched sitting in the largest church in the world or the smallest church in the world. Neither one of them mean that you'll be touched. It's up to you whether you receive from God wherever you are. you got to believe. See, that's what Elijah learned. It's the small, still voice of God. And Elijah then became strong and not afraid for his life any longer. And the Lord spoke to him and said, You go anoint Jehoshaphat now. You go anoint Jehoshaphat. I believe it's Jehoshaphat. Um, I believe it's Jehoshaphat. Um, anyway, I'm not following my notes. I'm just following the Holy Ghost. It was either Jehu or Jehoshaphat. Maybe it was Jehu. He said, go anoint him. And then he said, go anoint Elisha to take your place. See, when he got in the place, absent of fear, that still small voice came. See, too many times we're so busy we don't stop and hear God's voice. We don't learn the lesson to slow down. When you learn the lessons, when adversity comes, there's a reason it comes. It's not God, but there's a reason. Learn and don't fall back into that. So Elisha and Elijah both learned to hear God. Now, let's, let's go back just a little bit further in 1 Kings chapter 17. 
Let's go back a little further. When Elisha, Elijah had been sent by the brook. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? That God told him to go by a brook where there was some water. The, the, the drought had come. And then God told him, said, I'm going to send a bird to feed you. I mean, how much food can a bird bring? I'm wondering what size meals did he get? I mean, that bird had to make a lot of trips. But God said, I'm going to send the ravens to feed you. I don't know that I want a raven bringing me food. But anyway, to make the point, he trusted God. Elijah trusted God, but see, he, 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 he went into Mount Carmel, and then after he had this moment of losing his faith, losing his courage. But let me go on down with that 17. Then God told him, he said, go to the widow woman. Go to a widow woman and she'll provide for you. Then does that make sense? Does that make sense? Here he was by the brook. The brook dried up. God said, go to the widow woman. So he went to the widow woman. And when he went to the widow woman, what was the first thing that he asked her? Get me some water. Now, I'm always intrigued by this story. I'm always intrigued by this story because if she, had, if she knew who he was or didn't know who he, he was, the Bible doesn't say. But evidently she had some knowledge of who he was or she had great perception. She didn't say, who do you think you are? You think I'm going to get you some water? She was learning a lesson to be obedient. She was learning a lesson to be obedient. Let me say to everybody tonight, obedience is one of the greatest lessons we all can learn. We all can learn. What, what is the problem with so many of our children today? Disobedience. Rebellion. Hard hearts. But where did it come from? Where did it come? Many times it comes from somebody else that taught it to them. But she was not in rebellion. She was in total obedience and she went to get water. And as she was going in to get the water, the prophet said to her, Hold it. I need something to eat. She said, Oh, sir, I don't have anything, just a little bit of meal. My son and I were going to fix this. I was just gathering a few, few sticks of wood so I could make some fire. He said, Cook mine first. She learned a lesson. She was obedient. And what did her lesson bring her? What did her lesson bring her? Her lesson brought her life. It wasn't just food, but God brought her life because of her obedience. The food did not dry up. The oil did not dry up. The meal did not dry up. God provided for her, but there was even something greater that happened. Something greater that happened. Her son died. And when her son died, she learned, I've been obedient. Prophet of God, I did everything you told me to do. And now my son's dead. You do something about this. You've got to do something about this. And Elijah was not afraid. He went in, put his body up on the body of that child, and that body was revived and that child was brought back to life. See, when adversity comes, let it be a lesson that you need to do what God says and let it turn into a blessing. You can choose the outcome of your life if you will stand on the Word of God and believe God that He is a rewarder, and a rewarder to them that diligently seeks Him. Now, Father, you see the different ones that have prayer requests. You see the ones that are hurting, that is experiencing adversity, whether it's in their family, whether it's in their finances, whether it's in their body. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now, that your goodness 
will come upon each individual that's a part of this ministry time right now. I pray that your spirit will be so strong, your glory will be so powerful right now. That your goodness will just flow right into their life. And instead of them being fearful and afraid, instead of them giving up, instead of them feeling sorry for themselves or feeling alone, I pray, Holy Spirit, you will help. Now, let me say something right here. I know that everyone does not receive healing that prays for it. I know everyone that is sick with cancer or something does not always receive their healing on this side. That's sad and it's hard to take or your loved one may go by a heart attack, may go by a car accident or some other type of accident. I don't understand all of these things, but what I have learned, now listen to the lesson. When something happens and I don't see or you don't see the breakthrough, the lesson is still love God. Still trust God. Still be faithful to God. See, when our son was killed, the lesson we learned was, I'm not going to get mad at you, God. Because if I get mad at you, it's not going to change you from being God, and it's not going to cause you to say, okay, you're going to pout, and so I'm going to bless you because you're pouting. God's not going to bless your pouting. See, what we did... We learned that we didn't understand, but we're going to trust God. So if your loved one has passed and you've got pain because of the past, don't get mad at God and blame God and say, God, you don't love me. God does and he cares. But your loved one, if they're saved, they're in the presence of the Lord. So they're really better than they are when they were here if they were with you. And of course you want them to be with you. Of course we wanted our son to be here today and most likely he would have children. We would have grandchildren from him. But he's in heaven with Jesus. So that gives us consolation. Now, when, when he was killed, we looked at his checkbook. He had opened a check, checking account. He was only 15 years of age, but he had opened a checking account. And of course, his mother or me, I don't remember, maybe both of us was on the checking account with him. And we looked in his checkbook. He had written eight checks out of his checkbook. Five of them had been written to the ministry and three for personal. Five of the checks that he had written out of his checkbooks was to the ministry and three was personal. Well, you know what we did? Instead of being mad, angry, upset, we took the rest of that money and we put it in to the work of God. We sowed that money. We thought he has given the biggest portion of his money back to the ministry. So why not now take the rest of it and give it to the ministry? See, we had a need, so we sowed a seed. We had a need, so we sowed a seed. And I, I just believe that that's one of the, uh, this is one of the greatest things that I've learned, a lesson that I've learned, is when, when adversity comes, we sow a seed. Now, we don't wait, we don't wait till the, the adversity comes before we sow the seed. We don't wait till adversity comes, but when adversity comes, we don't stop sowing seed. See, some people will tithe when things are good, but when things get tight, then they stop tithing. See, don't stop tithing when things get tough. Don't stop tithing when things get tough. The lesson I've learned is to keep giving, keep tithing, when it seems like the well has gone dry. I could not tell someone else to do this if I didn't do it myself. The Bible says if we tithe, he'll open the windows of heaven and bless us. 
Now, if you don't tithe, you're not going. You're not going to take any of the gold off of the streets, and you're not going to take any of the jewels off of the gates. God's not going to have put the angels on rations if you don't tithe. There's not going to be a famine going on in heaven if you don't tithe because the money don't go to heaven anyway. It goes here to pay the bills of the ministry. But what you do, you rob God from the opportunity to bless you and rebuke the devourer from your life. See, many people think, I'm taking from... No, you can't take from God. Being mad at God, not tithing, not giving, none of that, none of that hinders. God is God. He will always be God. And God is there. 85% of the promises are to you personally. He wants to send those promises, but he wants you to keep your end. Learn the lesson to always tithe no matter what. If you get $10 tithe, if you get $100 tithe, if you get $1,000 tithe, no matter what it is, tithe on what God gives you. And then sow into the ministry. See, that's what that woman did, the widow did, when the prophet told her. She didn't start finding, well, she said, I'm going to cook this and we're going to die. But she, the prophet said, you do it first. So she was obedient. So when she was obedient, God supplied her need. See, how many times do we miss the mark and we don't learn the lesson? Well, I just, you know, we get into reason and we're trying to figure it out. You don't have to try to figure it out. God, somehow, in some way, he will make a way. Hello, Jeff. I'm glad that you're, you're on with us and you're uh, a part wherever you're from. Jeff, we're glad that you're a part. Now, let me just say this in closing. Maybe you should sow a seed. You that's on light cast, you that, on, that are on light cast, there's a place right here that says uh, chat. Bible, prayer, you've got a prayer request, you can just touch that, send me the prayer request, and then it says donate. Do this on, on, on Lightcast. You can hit the donate button, give your credit card, it's that quick. I've already given through this, so I know. I've used my credit card and I've already given through this. You know, I'm here week in, week out, doing my best to encourage you and love you. Maybe you need to sow a seed. Maybe there's some adversities in your life and some disappointments and hurts. Sow a seed so God can meet your need. Amen. Time and time again, time and time again, my wife and I, my wife and I have sown seeds over and over again. And God always supplies the need. I want to tell you something. God will meet your need. Yes. I want us to agree right now for everyone that's got a need, whatever it is. I know we prayed once, but I just feel like praying again. Would every one of you just take hands in the room? If you're there watching with somebody with your phone, your iPad, your desktop, whatever, would you take someone's hand and would you just get an agreement? I sense something happening in the Spirit right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness that people are connecting in different parts of the world right now. People are that are watching this later right now, you're speaking to them, you're ministering to them. I pray that every lie that the enemy has told them, they will not believe. No matter what they're going through, I pray the Holy Spirit will teach them today. The Word will be so real to them today. That even when they don't understand, just like me, I don't understand why our son was killed at 15. But instead of being angry and bitter, we trusted you more. Help that person that's lost their loved one that's so close and they're alone or they feel alone. Help them right now to be comforted by the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Well, again, you that joined us later at the front of the broadcast, um, I was talking about how from Easter to the National Day of Prayer, Pastor Jan, what day is that in May? Thursday, May 5th. Thursday, May the 5th. From this March till May the 5th.
from this Sunday, March the 27th. Sunday, March the 27th to May the 5th. Thursday, May the 5th. We're going to be praying 40 days for a great awakening in America and the world. Some of you that didn't hear that, if you'd like to pray with us, let me know that you're going to be praying with us and believe in God. Because we do need God to move. You know, uh, someone's saying on here that religion is what's caused the bombings in Belgium. Well, you know, religion is religion. I'm not promoting religion. I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. Jesus is not religion. Jesus is not religion. Jesus is alive. Jesus came to save. Jesus did not, Jesus would not support bombings. Jesus would not support hate. Jesus would not support evil. You know, my wife and I was watching a TV program the other night and it was two people and, uh, the son and the son, the man's son had been killed or daughter had been killed or no, his son had been killed and the sisters, it was her brother. And they were saying, we're, we hate the man that did this. We will never forgive him. If we forgive him, if we forgive him, then that means he's scot-free. No, they got it wrong. Their life is miserable. They, stand, they, they have spent their whole life since this murder in the media and everywhere else trying to get even. Spent their whole life hating and trying to get even. I just forgive I just forgive, and when I forgive, I don't let, it doesn't let people go free. They, they reap what they sow. They reap what they sow. You know, uh, you that's watching by Lightcast or live stream, go and look at the program if you didn't see it. Where, where Tiki, Tiki Finlinson was, her son was hit by a car, drunk driver, and it was a woman driving the car. She went to the prison and forgave the lady. The lady got out. Now they're friends and they work together in the ministry. See, that's not religion. Religion won't do that. Religion divides. Religion brings uh, chaos and confusion. But Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings love. Jesus brings healing. Jesus brings deliverance. So I believe somebody has been blessed of the Lord today. God bless you and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.